So how do we begin to see in the spirit? First of all, you need to understand the revelation that you are in the spirit. You are not in the flesh. A lot of people try to work themselves up to get from the flesh to the spirit. While Paul says you are in the spirit. That's it. You are in the spirit. And I, and I don't even have to go to the scripture right now. I mean, somebody can put it up. I think it's Romans 8 somewhere. You are in the spirit. You're not in the flesh. He doesn't say you have to try to be in the spirit. You are in the spirit. A lot of people try to, you know, they say, I need to get in the spirit now. Boom, bam, there, already done. Your eyes won't open. You will see nothing. So first we need to understand that we are already in the spirit. It's done. Because church has preached to us, we are not in the spirit. This is how we walk in the spirit. We need to pray so much. We need to fall so much. We need, then we get in the spirit. And when we're in the spirit, then this. And it's a bunch of law and nonsense. Why when you got saved... Did you see miracles and healings and you never prayed so much? You were just in love with Jesus. That's it. Give me the scripture that says we are in the spirit. I think it's Romans 8 somewhere. You are not, or oh, Galatians, you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. And what it does is it subconsciously begins to build a Christian walk where we think that eventually it says that, listen, you don't have a job because God isn't approving of you. You know, you're not praying enough. You know, you're not, you're not doing things right. You see, doctrine is very dangerous because doctrine shapes everything about you. Romans 8 and 9. Romans 8, 9. Let's see what it says. Why well, I'm like not, don't have my scriptures, guys. I'm kind of like between Bibles. I'm trying to find the perfect Bible. Romans 8 and 9. But you are not in the flesh. Hold on. Paul is saying, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. That's it. You are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. So you need to wash your mind. Get brainwashed. Renew your mind. And realize I am in the spirit. Only once you know that scripture and it's a part of your life. And you don't have a thought that you have to pray to become more spiritual. Is prayer good as a discipline? Yes. Please don't take a part of my message and make it the whole. I'll, if, I'll say now the basics of how to see in the spirit. We'll get now to prayer and the word and, 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 and imagination, meditation. Okay. But I can't do that if people don't understand this truth. You are in the spirit. There has never been a day that you have been less or more anointed than today. Well, if you have the anointing on you. Let me speak on my behalf. There has never been a day that I have been less or more anointed than right now. Don't burden yourself with a yoke that Jesus never gave you. Does this say that we don't have to attend church? No, no, that's just stupid. We have a... We have a relationship we have to cultivate with the Lord. We are complete but not mature. This is a revelation I released on Sunday. We are complete. You are complete. You are born full. You are born complete. Ten toes, ten fingers. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. Complete. You are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Complete. Every spiritual gift that you require that God has for you, it is there. You don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to add on to it. Grow. No, you can grow in faith. We can grow in grace by reading the word, becoming more Christ-like. But, but salvation is a whole full work done. 
So guys, as I say again, this is my partners that I'm giving you. I'm just giving our Facebook and our social and our public world a glimpse into a partner session. You are complete. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. Complete. The head, not the tail. Above and not beneath. Seated in heavenly places. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I even went so deep on Sunday. It's there in the middle of the teaching. Where Jesus says, let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Double colon. What is this mind? He says that Jesus did not count it robbery to be equal with God. And we can just stop right there. And then I'm not even going to touch on Galatians 4 verse 1. Where it says, while the child, is a difference between a child and a servant. While well, during that time he's under tutors and masters until he's grown up and so on. Though he be Lord of all, I'll drop that and I'll leave that for the Sunday coming. These are things that I've known for years that have set me free that when I sit in the church and I listen to what people preach and I think, God, where have we lost this? Where have we lost this? We have missed it. People saying that to listen to Sunday twice. I say other people also that to listen to Sunday over and over and over. And somebody, people send me testimonies, messages say it was like water on them. The whole message through, like just water, like rain falling on them. It's because it's truth. It's truth. I got to a frustration that was during this conference. I said, God, I've seen your glory. My eyes have beheld your glory. My eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. I have seen. These eyes here have seen the glory of the Lord. Right now, the presence of God is so strong on me. I have seen the glory of the Lord, yet I do not see it in the church of today. I do not see it in the church today. That's why I got to our conference and I was like, no. And the Lord said to me, I want my people to know my glory. <laughs> I want my people to know my glory. And uh, we preach glory. I heard in Cape Town, it just hasn't stopped since, since the conference that the prisoners have just been falling there. <laughs> Same in our churches here in Centurion and Krugersdorp. It's just been falling and it's been present. So, I thought I was a Christian until I joined Encounter. <laughs> so, where was I?
people like the law, and I, I, I'm going to preach very much on the law and grace to get people free in a certain area. These are things that how I got to this was years in ministry and I would travel and I would see God move. In grace and not in law. And I've traveled the world. I have seen when God moves in my life. The moments when God moves. And the moments when God doesn't. When he lifts. And let me tell you. Every time he lifts. Is because of the law. So people have lost the presence of God. Yes the presence is with him. But they have. They are not aligned themselves. They have not. I've been a Christian for 30 years and never heard the revelation of God in such a powerful way. We're just getting started. I'm only sharing 1% of what I know. I just got, I had to wait for the church to get into a place of maturity. I had to wait for the church to be able to receive it. You see, the Bible says that we start off in the spirit and we go back into the flesh. And that unfortunately is what happened to the church. What happens to many And, um, and, uh, you know, so Christ in the hope of glory, you are the fool, you are complete. A lot of people pray to a God in the sky and they forget, forget the God inside of them. A lot of people look to a God in the sky for answers and they forget the Christ in them, the hope of glory. No one can get to the God in the sky without Christ the door. And you are the door. Christ is in you. I see so many ministers looking for open doors, open doors, open doors, open doors, connections, connections, networks, open doors, connections, networks. <sighs> Do you know how many invites I got this year? Well, I actually don't get so many invites because people are, it's very difficult to get hold of me. And I keep it that way. Sylvia White White says. Second night in Centurion, as in the seven, the glory fell on me and I received healing. I remember, I noticed an immediate healing, eyes and burning sensation. But to date, I can without a doubt say I am healed completely. Eyes, burning sensation over my body, kidneys, heart, feet, everything healed. The glory heals physically and emotionally. You know... I get a lot of emails and I don't get a lot of emails. What I mean by that is a lot of people can't get hold of me. But uh, I do get invites and I turn a lot down. If not most, I turn down because I think the more connections you make, the more danger you put yourself in, in ministry. And a prophet is a, is a obscure being. A prophet is a person that lives in obfuscation a prophet is somebody whose vessel or whose antenna has to be clear and clean and cannot get into the affairs of men and cannot get into into signals that would disrupt by just hearing gossip and hearing this and hearing that so Wow, since I'm in your church one night deep in sleep, I felt pain in my belly button, but a voice heard say grace. I never felt that pain again. Ever encounters another level of grace. So, yeah, a lot of people are open doors here, open doors there. Listen, seeing in the spirit, how to see in the spirit. People are like, oh, but you're not getting to how to see in the spirit. You've missed the whole boat. If you're still asking me how to see in the spirit, you have just not heard a word that I was saying. Because everything that I was saying starts off by what I said.
And as I talk like that, people say they're feeling the presence. And it'll be like electricity. It'll be the presence. There are different types of anointings, different types of presence. I know when I'm operating the prophetic anointing, it'll be like electricity. Right now, it's not like electricity. Right now, it's, it's the presence. So, guys, remember, Thursday night, our biblical cryptology course is starting. Eh? It's going to be amazing. Cryptology is not numerology. Do not confuse the two. Cryptology is not numerology. So I hope I'm going to see all of you there. It's like $30 or something for the course starting Thursday. Thursday and Friday night, I'm personally doing it. It's going to be awesome. Uh, $30 or something for in biblical cryptology. And then the end of August is our prophetic partners retreat. Uh, retreat. That's going to be amazing. Our prophetic retreat. Sorry, our prophetic retreat. We have people already signed up from all over the world. We're trying to limit the spots. There's still a few left. And... Uh, you know, and it is going to, it is going to just join as a partner. Isabel says, awesome, Isabel. And they'll, if you follow the steps, the people help you through, even on Facebook, moderators will assist if you need help. Um, so, how can I join a web group? Lauren, somebody in the partners will answer you on that right now. I think what you're meaning is like an e-group online. And guys, I know that we have put quite a price tag on the prophetic retreat. It's not because we sell it. I, you know, I, I mean, sorry, it's not because we sell prophecy. I want to make that very clear. I'll prophesy to anybody, any service that, I, that, that the Lord leads me to. That money goes into our vision. That is for the next season of encounter that will be revealed. But it also just places a price tag on it so that what they can know that what the Lord is going to share that night is going to be, or those few nights, is going to be crazy. Because it just works like that. It just works like that. And I think this might be the last one for a long time. I think it's going to be the last one for a long time. I think so. You never know. But I think so. Sometimes God takes you in seasons and then he pulls back and it's like, I don't want to release more for very long. So there's a window of opportunity where things open and then that window closes. That's how it works in the prophetic. So let me get to how do you see and how do you start seeing in the spirit? How do you see in the spirit? How do you start seeing in the spirit? First of all, you are in the spirit. You need to deal with the law, grace, those things that we just spoke about a bit earlier. Then you need to know you are in the spirit. You are in the spirit. Awesome, Marius. You're going to do all the way from New Zealand. Can't wait to see you. Looking forward to see you. Uh, online, you do it for online. The market about three months ago received an offer, but offer. Wow, Nikki, awesome. That's a blessing of God. So, um, uh, you need to know that you are in the spirit. Then, number three, then we get into the basics of prayer, the word which is fine, but a lot of Christians pray and they don't meditate. A lot of people read the word and they don't meditate. Meditation is very, very necessary to see in the spirit. Meditation, please, for all the low-level ministers that want to jump on the bandwagon of calling me a heretic, we're not speaking. Get, get your mind out of the gutter. We're not speaking of Hinduism, meditation or anything like that we speak of biblical meditation which is two areas meditating upon the word and number two the art of the prayer of contemplation the prayer of meditation the art of silence the art of be silent and know that i am god so so um Meditation. Meditation is 
not emptying yourself. Oh, sorry, it's not emptying yourself. It's stilling yourself. It's gazing. Now, you cannot do meditation without imagination. So now we need to understand that imagination is not evil. The day you got saved, your imagination is sanctified. And obviously it becomes more sanctified by that because we don't all have a perfect imagination. But how do we sanctify imagination? It's very simple. The Bible says renew your mind with the word. So the more I get in the word, the more my imagination gets sanctified. But don't throw away your imagination. The imagination is so powerful. You cannot have anything without seeing it, but I'll preach that at a later stage. You cannot have anything without seeing it. The way you see it is, is first in the mind's eye. Your mind can only work on images. Your mind can only process images. So your mind requires an image to see. That's why the Lord said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what do you see? I see the branch of an almond tree. You have seen well. Now, what do you see? I see this. Okay, you've seen well. Now, this is what I'm saying. You cannot have anything without seeing. So when God speaks, his words becomes images and his images becomes pictures, which is in your mind. The moment it comes as images, now you can begin to process it. So God requires you to see. God requires you to see your promise before entering it. If you enter your promise before seeing it, you are illegal in your promise. If you are entering into a property before seeing it with your mind's eye, you are entering illegally into it. It means your body has entered into a place where your mind doesn't stretch, your spirit doesn't stretch, God has not given it to you because nothing in this realm comes from this realm. It first comes from another realm, the Bible says. So if something doesn't come to you from another realm, it just comes in this realm, you are entering into it illegally and it will be taken away. It will find legs and it will run away from you. It's like, it's like people that are stuck in poverty that wins the lottery. And they come out of a trailer park or they come out of, uh, out of a place where they just don't even know what $200 is a month. And this is not to put a shame on people that don't have money. I'm just speaking of a mindset. Now all of a sudden they win $10 million, $20 million. And it has been statistically proven that over 90% of them goes back to the condition where they were before they won the lottery. Why? Because that blessing came and realized, but your state has not been upgraded. You have not raised in levels. Your mind is, I am illegally here and I find legs and I move away. That is why a lot of people feel that blessings that are leaving them a devil esteem. The devil cannot steal anything from you. He has no right to steal your promise. Trust me. God. <laughs> the war is over. He is defeated on the cross. We make up an enemy that no longer exists. I'm not saying the devil doesn't exist. I'm saying we give him power that he doesn't have. When we do deliverance, we're not trying to cast out devils. We enforce an authority that's already been given. We enforce a sentence that has already been put in. Christians are so scared of anything around them. You will see how many questions I get. Is this thing in my house? right or not is this thing listen get off that nonsense get off that nonsense get into a relationship with god get into a relationship with god so you have to understand this to begin to see so you need to meditate that brings and you you cannot meditate without imagination imagination causes your eye to begin to see and when you see it in the spirit you can now enter it into the natural so unless you see it you cannot have it abram lift up your eyes and see for as far as you can see i'll give it unto you uh abram look at the stars and as you see the stars so it'll be elijah elisha if you see me going, you will have what you ask for. See, 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 see. But people's eyes are blinded because of the law. And the law is there because the church is preaching a wrong gospel to them. A gospel that doesn't set free. A gospel that burdens. A gospel that puts them back into bondage. Back into bondage.
So this is the first key is to see in the spirits. Nothing, nothing, nothing weird. We need to first understand law and grace. We need to understand the Lord. We need to understand the Lord darkness. We need to understand that we are in the spirit. Then we need to understand prayer, word, fasting, and so on. Meditation. But meditation does not come without imagination. Imagination is not evil. Even God imagines. You come out of God's imagination. You come out of God's imagination. God gave you an imagination. We made the soul evil. We made the imagination evil. We call things de 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 demonic and we demonize things that God never demonized. That's why I have a big problem about this whole, you know, where they just, ah, prophets need to call out repentance, need to call out sin. Or, you know, you have these demonic things in your home and you have these demonic things in your home. Stop doing that. Start seeing Jesus. People that continually battle, you know, I made a statement on Sunday, continually battle with demonic things. Don't have the mind of Christ. I'm going to say it again. People that battle with the demonic does not have the mind of Christ. You see, demons cannot live in you when you have the mind of Christ. They cannot. Now, if you don't have the mind of Christ, they can. Where does sin originate from? It originates from the thoughts, from desire. So when you have the mind of Christ, okay, I'll leave it there. I preached on Sunday. It might be too much for a public platform. So people become sin conscious because they sin conscious. God cannot use them. Why? Because God cannot look upon sin. So how can God use them if he can't look on them? The Bible says when Jesus took on the sins of the world, God looked away because he can't look upon sin. So when we are sin conscious, because our imagination is the real deal, so we imagine we are sinning, we are conscious of our sin, so that is actually so what? We are in sin. The moment I am sin conscious, I am in sin. I am guilty of it. So God's eyes is away from me. When God's face is turned away from me, the word face in the Bible is presence. So God's presence moves away from me. So how do I lose God's presence? By becoming sin conscious. I'm not even doing sin. I'm just sin conscious. There his presence leaves me. Change the mind. I hope Encounter is going to catch this. I hope my partner is going to catch this. You know how many Christians condemn themselves? That's why they can't see an angel. Everybody can see demons. Nobody has a problem by seeing demons. Even people, there was people attacking me and all they say is like, oh, you know, I have no problem uh, believing in demonology and pastors can preach on demonology, but don't you dare teach on angels. What nonsense. Go and get saved, woman. The church has been indoctrinated, people. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And you know, when I preach this, the, all the only messages I keep getting is people saying, I feel free. I feel free. That is a concern because it means that you were in bondage. That is a big concern. So I really want to bless our partners. I really want to appreciate our partners. This session I did have on Facebook. We don't ever really do that. That is just a glimpse just this day on what my partner sessions is like. And this was just an impromptu partner session. I see all our partners here. We have over 150 on right now on our private platform here. We have 200 people watching on this side here. And I want to say, like, really, I really want to bless my partners, but I really am blessed by our partners. I'm, you know, our partners are helping us advance this message of the prophetic, this move of God and this incredible season we are going in with this next project we are facing that is just it is incredible it is very big 
that it is so big. That is why I wait so that with the moment we release it is the biggest thing ever. It will be released properly. And it's going to be a global thing that people can invest in all over. And those that are going to be investing into it, those that are going to be giving towards sowing into this. When I say investing, I'm speaking investing into eternity with our finances, with this thing. Because you're investing into generations, into legacies, into your children, your children's children. And with what God is doing. And, and uh, you know, those who are going to be giving towards it. Uh, I know people are going to be challenged to give really big because we, we're going to need it. But it's going to be putting an eternal work that is going to be amazing. And we cannot do it without our partners. We cannot do it without our partners. We cannot do it without our global partners. Because this is also going to put in a lot of stuff for global things for our uh, broadcasting. That's going to go to a, something totally different. The Lord spoke to me about two things apart from just the one thing that we are doing that is connected to global and so on. So, uh, so... I really, really appreciate our partners. I want to ask you not to stop partnering, carry on partnering, your seed, your blessing. You know, as much as what this can come to me personally, it's allowed. Uh, according to law, it is allowed. According to, 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 to what do you call it? The IRS in America, SARS, this other, it, it's allowed. Obviously, you pay tax on it. It's allowed because, because partners is for the profit is for personal. So what I'm saying is as long as, because a lot of people partner because they want to, they want to bless the prophet. But the Lord spoke to me very clearly that during the season, not to do that now, but everything is going towards the project, everything. So a lot of ministers get really upset. You know, a lot of people think that we take the money off the church and we take this and we take that. Listen, I don't even listen to that, to that nonsense. Because I know what, how our structures look like. I know what goes in towards our things. And we got 850 partners and actually to make this thing successful, we're going to need, uh, we're going to need a, uh, a minimum of 2000 partners. And I want to encourage those who are partnering to not stop partnering. You are blessed by partnering with a prophet. Trust me, you are blessed by partnering with a prophet. The Bible is very clear. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And I'm still going to preach a bit more deeper on what the prophet's reward is. You are blessed. Um, I want to encourage you not to stop partnering. And I want to encourage you when you pray, when you feel led, when you increase, when your income increases and so on, to increase your partnership. There is a special blessing that comes with this that is beyond tithing, beyond offering. It is partnering with a prophet. The prophetic is still very real. So, guys, anyway, with all of this Tuesday, we're doing a special, special evening. Um, we're doing a special evening with all our church members. Oh, I did say it, that we're going to speak about some things. So that's, oh, not Tuesday, that's Wednesday. And then Daniel Adams, tag Daniel Adams quickly. I'm not sure if he's on anymore. I wonder if I can bring Daniel in. Let me let me let me find out if I can bring him in if he's available. Apostle Daniel Adams. Let me see. If it's if it's if it's available, I don't like it when people do it to me. So you know, I don't want to be. I don't know how to invite somebody. Let me see something. Oh my goodness! I don't know how to invite somebody. What is this? Oh, he must request to join. Oh, yes. But that is if he's on, if he's going to get the message. Anyway, let's see if he gets the message. Then, um, then I'll get him on quickly. So he's coming, guys, to the 23rd. Sunday, the 23rd. He's going to, I don't know, Friday, the 21st. 
We will be at Encounter Cape Town, both myself and him with Bosses TF on Friday the 21st. Sunday the 23rd, I think it is Sunday the 23rd, is going to be in the morning in Centurion and Krugersdorp Encounter and then the evening at Centurion Encounter. Come from all over. It is going to be very special uh, messages. I mean, it's going to, sorry, it's going to be very special services. It is going to be amazing. It is, uh, it is going to be special. It is going to be amazing. He operates and moves in a very powerful gift, I believe. Preaches a gospel of freedom. Uh, preaches real, um, it's just really fresh. The hand of God is strong on his life. Um, the hand of God is really strong on him. God's grace is very strong on him. Uh, you know, so people, I know people are going to come from all over for that Sunday. Will the 21 June be event in Cape Town for people to join? Of course, guys, listen, anything of our church is free. It's open. So many people ask me, um, do they have to pay or do they have to book? No, no, every Sunday, every conference, everything is free. Unless we say this is a paid closed event, but otherwise everything is free. So that is free. That'll be free. So, so Elmery, that's going to be Friday the at Cape Town and then um doesn't look like he's replying now Friday in Cape Town and uh uh Sunday in Centurion and Krugersdorp you don't want to miss that that Friday and that Sunday it is going to be amazing you want to invite friends you want to Cape Town come on you invite a lot of people advertise it I think the fly is going to possibly go up this week if we finish with it get get in a finishing time it'll be up this week share this thing guys I want to ask everybody we have we have over 300 400 people on right now watching us on, on two platforms when that flyer goes live I want you all to share it as much as you can look we're not looking for attendance we got great attendance great following and everything in our church but I believe God is going to touch a lot of people through his ministry and it's going to be a very powerful way to introduce them to South Africa and um, you know, I, and I know you will be blessed. I know you'll be blessed. We're going to have a great time. We're going to take him hunting. We're going to take him hunting. People saying I'll take a day's leave just to go to Cape Town. <laughs> so it'll be the evening in Cape Town Friday, guys. And then Sunday, Centur morning, Centurion, Krugersdorp, the evening, I believe Centurion. Uh, we obviously have to do it where we have the most space. So, huge win. But do you think you'll be able to meet with partners at the Forerunners Conference in Texas? I'll definitely, but I don't think I'll have so many there. If there is, I mean, I'll definitely meet, even if there's one partner at uh, Texas. Of course I will. But Jess, good to see you. I'm actually doing a... Uh, uh, private live stream with my partners here. So I'm speaking to my partners. I'm just letting Facebook have a glimpse of what I'm speaking. So we spoke about how to see in the spirit, spoke about law and grace. People don't understand law and grace and sin and, and all this stuff. And you are in the spirit. You never have to be in the spirit. You don't have to walk in the spirit. You are in the spirit. That's what Paul says. You are not in the flesh. So we need to understand we are in the spirit. Then we need to understand law that. We are not under the law and people have such a hard time to believe that they're continually working for God's acceptance, God's approval. Even when it comes to things of the spirit, we are complete man. Then once we have that, then we go into prayer and then we go into the word and then we get into, into meditation. And meditation can never be done without imagination. Now that is the start of beginning to see in the spirit. So I hope our partners got something from this, guys. I don't want to be too long. It's just a short session. And I hope those on Facebook had a glimpse of what I just quickly do with my partners. Um, and I encourage all my partners in the United States to get to Daniel Adams' event in Texas in November. It's going to be awesome. Looking forward to seeing you in the UK. Are you guys going to see me in the UK? Is that by the event that is coming up um, uh, at RIG? London, the conference, Occupy conference. Is that there? Well, I think that's the only event I have in 
in London. Yes, with Rick. Awesome. I'm excited to see you guys. Looking forward. It's a total new area for me, that. So um, pray for me. Pray for acceptance. Pray for favor. Pray for the grace of God on me. I always say, you know, I am not, I am not uh, the best public speaker. I'm not the best communicator. I'm not the best person to articulate certain things. So I always go and trust in the Lord. Uh, really, before I get onto a stage, my trust has to be fully on him because I cannot do anything without him. Do you ever give guidance to partners? Somebody was asking me on Facebook. I do, but I try to limit it. Guys, I'm very against prophets giving guidance. The Holy Spirit is our helper. And the moment people put their eyes on a man, they really limit themselves and then they blame that man if things go wrong. So I do give by the instruction of the Lord, by the guidance of the Lord. And then if somebody really has a problem, I, I meet with them or I meet with them online, a video call, or like this week I'm meeting with, with a partner personally. Um, uh, because they need some assistance and then I'll be there with assistance as much as what I can, you know, but I also, it's very difficult for me to be th spread thinly. Sometimes people just demand my attention. I have people saying, oh, we want to see you now. It's, it's very tough, you know, it's very difficult. Um, I don't even get to see my close, close, close pastors. Sometimes not even in months. Listening from my jacuzzi in my garden in UK. Blessings to you. Uh, Deborah, awesome. UK is good. I like UK. I would like to extend our partner offices to UK. I like to extend our partner offices in the UK, but we need to grow our partners in the UK to do that. But I want to. So we got New York and I need to extend to the UK. People saying I'm an exceptional communication. <laughs> actually, I'm, actually, I'm horrible. Uh, that's just the Lord anointing your ears not to hear certain things. I, I hate this accent that I have. I try. I, I was. I was wondering if I shouldn't go to a speech therapist. If anybody knows, maybe of a very, very good speech. When I say speech therapist, I'm thinking of somebody that can work, give you training in articulating and vocal training type speaking training. I don't know if they call it speech therapist, but um, I would have loved to. To have that, you know. Pray for me and the kids I'm teaching. They are going through many different challenges. It's an Alice in class. Okay. So I can't remember what I was on, what subject I was on. Was so the partners? We need a partner office in extension in the UK. I I do need that. I need an office in the UK. So ministry, uh, actually Pastor Mike Signorelli's ministry is, is with us, partnering with us, Ian. What I mean partnering, they, he is my um, contact and uh, contact point and assisting us with offices on that side in New York. And then we also have Ian Georgia um, with Angeline, Evangeline, that's on here also right now in Georgia. So we have that side as well. And then I really want to get... I really, we really need to, the reason we need to get into the UK, the reason for it, guys, is because I saw our European side growing. And when it comes to financial things and so on, it's better to have something established there and to get things to your partners. It's very difficult to get things to your partners physically if they're in certain countries. How do you know if the spirit is talking or the devil? No, if this, if this power, if the power or the devil, does he have power to speak to us when we have the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, he definitely has. He spoke to Jesus. Guys, always go back to scripture. The devil spoke to Jesus. He can definitely speak to you. There's power in your voice. Thank you for encouraging me. Uh, nothing wrong sounding like a burkey still. Huh. Yeah, they, I, I just, it's difficult for Americans to understand me. It's difficult. Maybe even for Europeans, it might even be more difficult um, and then a lot of South Africans make fun of me, but just your, I don't really care, like religious type people, you know, they, they don't really have anything else to do. Their whole lives is miserable. They don't have any money. They got nothing. The only thing they can do is just try to attack others. Um, 
I enjoy the accent from South Africa. You remind me of Prophet Kim. A lot of people say to me that I remind them of, of Prophet Kim Clement. So apparently when I was preaching in New York, some people walked out. I just saw some comments on Facebook. There's a whole thing going around where they say they need to now close the borders of the spirit of the church in America in a sense of let's not get some preachers from outside in and all that type of stuff. Yeah, that's spiritual racism. We need to be very careful of that. Hello, we are pastors. Margaret Sanchez, nothing wrong with your accent. Um, Margaret saying we are pastors. Welcome, Margaret. Uh, we have a lot of people on Facebook. Oh, yes. And guys, if I'm in the UK, let me know, please, if you do come. But remember, it is a closed event, meaning I think it needs to be registered. I'm not exactly sure. So you need to register with the event. Just make sure so that you guys don't get there. Because remember, even though I would let you in, and it's not up to me, guys. It's not up to me. I'm just being invited there. I'm just being invited there. But listen, God is doing amazing things, like I said, with our next season. We're entering into a project in the next three to four months. Uh, and uh, sorry, it's already entered into. We already done millions of rands of purchasing and payments and etc. And it will be revealed to you all soon, maybe four or five months from now. And it's the biggest thing we've ever gone into, the biggest next season, the biggest project. Can't wait to share it with you all, but we can't share it before it's time uh, because we're just getting everything established everything in place many is going to begin to assume certain things and that's fine you can and you'll probably assume right but when it's going to be revealed you're going to be blown away we're speaking about a project of a minimum i know i said 80 to a million hundred rand it's actually a hundred million rand a little bit more than a hundred million and uh we will show quotes and everything like that to people um you know that is i think about five to six million us dollars um that's the project we are going into and it needs to be done like yesterday do you need somebody to come to bts in the uk oh to britain <laughs> as many people can come as they as they want i'm also available yes they need to register in limited spaces paula what kind of saying yeah, they need to register and and there is there's guys there's limited space i'm not exactly sure how much but there's limited spaces need to register and you can go and register and i'm not sure if it is only for rig partners or not but i'm gonna ask what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna ask i'm going to ask uh uh I'm going to ask Apostle John. In fact, I'm going to have a session with him also very soon with our partners. He's Apostle John from, from uh, Rick London, and he runs a uh, great church in um, uh, it's Wimbledon, Elam Church, a uh, great church. And um, great church. And... Uh, that's where I'm going to with a conference. So I was just ministering to his partners. I need him to minister to our partners. It is. So that will also be a session that is coming soon. So guys, listen, we need to get off and done. Partners, over 150 partners on here. The numbers is dropping a little bit on Facebook. I just gave you simple key, simple introduction for our Facebook followers on how I do my part session and just to show you let me let me show our facebook guys or well, let me see maybe i can do it like this so see here is my live session with 
my partners. There's some of my partners. I don't want to show too many of their names. There's just four, so that's fine. I'll just do that. But I don't want to show many of their names, but you can see there's 154 that's right now connected. And uh, this is the platform called Mighty Networks. So, whoops. So that is our partners. Let me see partners. So partners, let me ask before I close the session, do you have any questions? Um, I didn't even answer the question with the ashes and uh, the bury thing. So please don't tell Marsha or those people that, that I said message, don't message them because I haven't answered it yet. I'll maybe answer it here at the end. Nah. Let me give a quick answer, but I'll try to do a proper one also. A lot of people ask about the difference between being buried and, and ashes. Uh, I think Pastor Vlad Safjuk wrote a great blog post on it. If anybody wants to go read what he wrote, it's on his blog post. I think he wrote a very good one. Even though he leans a little bit towards the physical burying, I also lean towards that. If you have a choice, I would obviously lean towards that. But there are countries, and especially in South Africa, where sometimes it's not an option. Sometimes it's not an option. And uh, I don't believe we have to be buried physically to be resurrected in the day of resurrection by the coming of the Lord. I don't believe that at all because obviously our body goes from dust to dust. But um, it is a good custom that has been followed, a Jewish custom that has been followed, especially also by the early church because they believed their bodies was going to be resurrected. Then remember, they already they believed the second coming was coming. So... Uh, um, and the resurrection and so on was already going to be there at that time. So out of customary, they did it. But possible, I wrote a really good post on it. And then I want to encourage people. A lot of people ask me questions like, do we keep ashes? Is it bad to keep ashes? Guys, it's not good to keep ashes. <laughs> it's not good to keep ashes. Uh, there's a lot of practical things to it, deliverance things to it, but it keeps, it's, a, a, a person doesn't um, deal, a person doesn't deal with, uh, with the pain. Adriana Guerrera, Adriana Guerrera, I'm just seeing a message now. Send me, send me an invite. Send me a, uh, you can send me a Facebook message. I should receive it in my inbox. I remember your name. I should receive it. Um, I also do receive messages on Instagram, guys. And uh, send me an invite and I will definitely see if I can fit it in. Very expensive to have a regular beer on the US. So, so I never become legalistic, but I think the one thing we have to go on is just the, the ashes. You know, it's not, it's not good to keep ashes, it's not biblical, it's not scriptural. Um, and it has a lot of just wrong implications. It doesn't have pre enclosure. It causes people to still stay connected, still hold on, doesn't cause people to grieve properly. And, uh, then there's some salt ties that's connected to it. And I believe some familiar spirits and so on that can be connected to that. I usually encourage people, if it's ashes, let it go into the ground or wherever you want to spread it, spread it, but let it, let it, go, let it go. There has to be a, a release. There has to be closure. So let me read some. Is there any partners on you guys that have any questions? Question for my birthday, I got my deceased dad ring. Oh, no problem. A lot of people ask questions. I don't think there's anything worth it, guys, unless the Holy Spirit really tells you there's something in it, like a Freemasonry ring or something like that. But I don't think there's anything wrong with that stuff. I mean, I want to give stuff to my children. You know, that's something you're really going to have to pray to the Lord. And, and I wouldn't get too super spiritual unless it's something really clear, like it's a Freemasonry ring or it is something demonic. You know, I wouldn't be too, too held up on that. Maybe some other people have different different views than me, different stance than me, but that is where I stand. I'm not here to, to jump to the, to the usual flow that everybody thinks. Um, or that's everybody, everybody expects a prof, you know, us to, to think the same way, for example, than maybe a lot of deliverance ministry does. No, we don't. 
I'm not in a lot of things when it comes to bondage of legalism and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm not into that. I see you know, South African money with 666. Yeah, I did see. I heard about it. I heard about it. Ah, but it's nothing new. I mean, USA has Freemasonry stuff on. It's nothing new. Any questions? No questions. I have a question, but it could be weird. Let me just see that I haven't missed any questions. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My aunt in the UK came to visit us and attended e-group here with my mother and she was blown away by encounter on form of this event. Awesome. Just make sure she's registered, guys. Can see, my partners doesn't have many questions because they have all the answers. <laughs> so if you want all the answers, become a partner. I'm just joking. No, I'm not actually joking. My computer batteries are dying here, so I need to, I need to get going. I don't see any questions on our partners. God bless you guys. Love you. Hope Facebook enjoyed this partner session. My partners, I'll get, I still need to close the and get to the end of the angiology course. I will do so. Don't lose patience. We'll get there. I was just interrupted with a lot of travels so i'm going to see you all those who signed up for our biblical cryptology course how many signed up let me know quickly how many have signed up for our biblical cryptology course starting this thursday what is my thoughts on crypto eddie van rensburg well i've invested in crypto <laughs> so i lost obviously a lot but i think right now now i'm not going to give investment types but i'm going to read now your comments guys but look when the market when nobody is buying it's a good time to buy when nobody is selling it's a good time to sell. So, always think of that because I can't give investment advice, so I can only say that. People say signing up. Yes, I have signed up. My husband and I both registered. Profit. Awesome, awesome. Signed up, signed up. Guys, there's also a discount for the, prof for the prophetic retreat for our partners. I did, signed up, signed up, you appreciate it, thank you, thank you so much. Let me know if you guys signed up for the course, let me see Facebook, how many signed up, then I'm going to see you Thursday at our Biblical Cryptology. Remember, cryptology is not numerology. Belinda said she signed up, good, awesome, thank you so much. Numerology is not cryptology, signed up, top tier partners get big discount. Yeah, top tier partners get very big discount on our partners, I think 50%, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not exactly sure what's the percentage of our big tier, but I think 50%, our top, top, top tier partners for the partner retreat. Um, not sure if there's discount on the biblical cryptology, not sure for our partners because we do it such a good price, guys. It's, it's like part of the Bible school and um, signed up, signed up. So I'm going to see you guys Thursday evening for our biblical cryptology starting Thursday, doing Thursday night and Friday night. I'm going to be in my studio. It's going to be awesome. We're going to get into into uh, a lot of cryptology. Cryptology is not cryptolo uh, cryptography. Cryptology is not cryptography. And cryptology is not numerology. Cryptology is also not prophetic numbers. Although I'll get a little bit into prophetic numbers just to ease some people that, that, that really wants to hear that. But a lot of people just limit themselves to that. And then we're going to get into biblical cryptology. To give you a greater understanding of the magnitude of God, the uh, planned out plan of the universe, creation, everything. It is going to be amazing. So I'm going to see you Thursday. And uh, let me see still who has signed up, who has signed up. I know we already dropped a lot of viewers on Facebook. We're over 200 viewers on Facebook for most of the part of the broadcast. But I'm finished right now. It's been over an hour already. It's been actually an hour and 26 minutes. And I think, I'm not sure how long Mighty Network's live stream I can go for. Maybe only an hour and a half. So I need to get off. Keep seeing double and triple numbers. I'm going to deal with that as well in the course. People that are seeing 2222, 1111. I'll be at the partners retreat. Chantal Priya saying awesome. Uh, Prophet, if we sign up for the partners retreat, will we get the video? Guarding study afterwards. Uh, the, our courses, yes, the partners retreats, guys, I'm not sure because there is too many, too many pulls 
there's too many poles. So I, I'm not sure. We haven't with the previous ones, and I don't think we're gonna we're going to with the with this one. People can take as many notes as they want. I see four 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 a lot. Those are the things I'm gonna kind of like deal with in the course, also, guys. Been seeing double numbers and flashes of lights. Flashes of light is is angels, communication, and so on. Numbers is God communicating with you. Numbers is a prophetic calling. Numbers is warnings. Numbers is, that's just not just prophetic numbers. I'm not touching on biblical cryptology. Will this be replay in Canada? Is time and I'm working. Yes, yeah, so when you sign up for the, oh, this, you can watch afterwards, but the biblical cryptology, if you sign up for it, it's in your portal directly afterwards. You can always watch it for as long as you want. Okay. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm constantly seeing numbers every day. Thank you, prophets. 1111 is a very important number. There's a reason why people are seeing 1111. Uh, very important number. Bright light over my head. I keep on seeing the number 22. Also important one. Your most two, two important ones is 22, 22 and 1111. Or 222 and 1111. Those are your two main ones that is important. Why is the dream course not available on the GSO website? I'm not sure. Maybe we'll make it available. I'm not sure. We'll see. But it should be available on Leon de Pro. It should be somewhere. But uh, if it should be on the GSOM, we'll, we'll make sure it is on there. So thanks, guys. Just wanted to spend some time with you. And I'm going to be going back into prayer. David Orton is saying Dream Course is on GSOM website. So it is on there. Um, we love you. I'm with Pastor Mike Signorelli and love partnering with you and supporting your ministry. Thank you so much, Andrea. Uh, Andre A. Forbes, I know you guys are part of following us for a while now already. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Great church. I really enjoy preaching there. Um, I really enjoyed preaching there. I believe that I feel that the prophetic gift was very activated there. Very activated there. And I want to have Pastor Mike on on my live stream soon. I'm sure he will. I mean, I've spoken to him and we've agreed. And I just want to get the right date and the right topic and the right thing. And I know that many people will be blessed with having him on our live stream. And then I want to get some profits out for our partners. I'm really working on that. I'm also looking to see if I can find a very, very strong prophetic gift for our partners, for our prophetic retreat, our prophetic retreat. You know, the other ones I've gotten, I think I had, I mean, I'm not going to say who I had out, but I had some profits in, in the past ones. So, um, uh, uh, you can come in. So I'm trying to get some prophets or a prophet specific, a prophet out. I'm looking if, I, I want to get a mystic prophet out for, um, for a prophetic retreat, a mystic prophet. Um, but what does it mean when you're flying around high places? I want to say hello. Hi. So she just got home from school. So, but my battery is almost dying on you guys. So I need to, I need to get going. Let me just see who's all coming for the course or not. Okay. So many people said they signed up. They signed up. I hope you're more signed up. Hope you guys are going to see it. Uh, or you're going to be with us on Thursday night. And uh, I'm not sure how many have signed up already. I'm not sure how many have signed up already. So I'm here in my prayer office. This is why I pray. It's a very nice room. So, yeah, so this is her favorite. <laughs> the bed is just in your temporary until we build on a certain thing. So this is where we pray. This is your favorite day. Eh? Yeah, especially the library. The library. Yeah. So that's my library. I just need to put some more books in there, which I have somewhere packed away. And then obviously this is the back side where I'm sitting on the couch here. Okay, guys, so I need to get going. Okay, people are saying hello to you. Hi. Hi. 
Uh, people saying hello, hello, hello. And you shot your second animal? Yeah, it was a black impala. Black impala. Oh, he's going to still have the letter. Uh, Evangeline says she still has the letter you wrote her. Evangeline from USA. What letter? I don't know. <laughs> Greetings from New Zealand. Good to see you. That's awesome. So... Guys, so Facebook got a glimpse on my partner session. We're going to get going. God bless you. I'll see our partners soon.